what would you do in that situation? That would be crazy. I don't even know what I would say to that person. Like kindly pat them on their head and be off with you. Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though we do get up to other fiber related topics from time to time. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the Southwest United States. This is where I am from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three and a half year old son, Angus, our seven month old son, Ronan, and our big fat house cat, Oscar. If this is your first time visiting the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel, welcome. Thank you so much for checking out this small corner of YouTube that we have here. And if at any time you do see something you like, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. That way you can keep posted on all the goings on over here at the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. If you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you as always so much for coming back time and time again every time something new is uploaded here on the channel. The subscriber count here at the channel has grown in the last little bit and I'm super excited about that. I'm so excited to know that you guys are finding the channel and finding something here that you enjoy and that means so much to me. That's super exciting. Thank you so much for contributing to the growth of this channel. It means so much to me and it's always so exciting to kind of figure out the direction that I'll be taking the channel in the future and all of the fun things that are coming up. And that's all because you guys continue to support my fiber journey here at the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do that via email. There is an email address associated with the podcast. It is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. The podcast has a Pinterest page now. It's kind of my idea of of a visual show notes, if you will. It's a place where the things that are mentioned on the show are organized visually. So you can head over there and use it as a place to find direct links to those things that are mentioned. The Pinterest moderator is Steffi, who is at Hootie Knits on Ravelry. She is the one who's organizing that Pinterest page and keeping it up to date. Steffi, thank you so much for doing this all the way from Vienna, Austria. It means so much to me. So as always, thank you, Steffi. You can also find me on Instagram where I'm most active. I have two Instagram accounts. I have have one that is connected to everything uh, involving my knitting and the podcast and one that is connected to fiber for the people which is my hand dyed yarn business. My knitting and my podcast Instagram is at wool needles hands and my hand dyed yarn business fiber for the people can be found at fiber.for.the.people and you can also find more about fiber for the people at fiberforthepeople.com the online shop. You can buy yarn there. You can check out the story behind the business. You can learn a little bit about the bases and the colorways as well well as my Lucky Strike colorways, which are a special one-off colorway that I offer in the shop from time to time. So lots of good information there. You can also learn a little bit about the behind the scenes process of Fiber for the People yarn here on the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. I do upload semi-regularly yarn dyeing vlogs and tips from the dyeing studio videos as well. So all of that is kind of a behind the scenes peek at what goes on here at Fiber for the People headquarters. The next shop update for Fiber for the People is not until November 17th. I've given myself a little bit of a stretch of time between the previous shop update, which was uh, last Saturday and the next shop update because I'm really busy right now of putting the finishing touches on advent calendars, which are gonna be going out in a few days now. And so once those are all finished and sent out, I'm gonna get back in gear with dyeing yarn for the shop update. And I'm super, super excited um, for not only the next shop update, for several shop updates after that, because we are going to be moving to a weekly shop update schedule. Um, as far as I know, and as far as I'm planning right now, that is the plan. I'm going to be shooting to, I'm going to be attempting weekly shop updates. And that's because I have kind of worked some things in the background, reorganizing my business model a little bit. And because the business has been growing a lot in the last several months, I've been able to make some changes that will allow me to hopefully have weekly shop updates. So that will be coming um, shortly as well. But for right now, I'm allowing myself a little bit more of a stretch in between shop updates to get those advent calendars finished. So I don't have a yarn sexies video today for new yarn that is coming to the shop, but I am going to give you a little brief yarn sexies video of what is currently in the shop. So if impulse should strike, you can head over there and scoop up some really yummy yarn. Also, if that should be the case, don't forget to use the coupon code WNH to receive 10% off your order. And if you're seeing this before the 10th of November, it is free shipping in the United States on any order. So that's a little bit of a bonus. <laughs>
said the next shop update for Fiber for the People is November 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can keep posted on that update on Instagram where I share all of the new yarn that's coming to the shop in both Instagram stories and on my Instagram feed. But also don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. If you head over to fiberforthepeople.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. It says subscribe, type in your email address, click subscribe. And all that is, is that every time I have a shop update, I will send out a newsletter to keep you informed of what's going to be in the shop. And then also I provide special uh, promotions for newsletter subscribers that others don't have access to. So it's a little bit of a perk to be a newsletter subscriber. Nothing spammy, just plain and simple. Here's what's going to be in the shop update information just for you. I forgot to mention this at the top of the podcast, but I want to remind you that we do have a Ravelry group associated with the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. Head over to Ravelry, search Wool Needles Hands a Knitting Podcast, and you can join the group there. There's lots of lively chatter going on. Plus, we have two knit-alongs, which I'm going to talk to you about right now. first knit along that we have going on it's a year-long knit along called the wool needles hands year of hats 2018 this is where we are knitting a different hat every month based on a different theme if you'd like to learn more about this particular knit along or to get involved head over to the Ravelry group learn more there jump on board we are just starting November which we'll talk about in just a moment but you have plenty of time you do not have to knit a hat every single month you just have the option of jumping in and out whenever you want just know we're knitting hats until the beginning of the new year and I think we might be launching this again or some variation of this for the next year as well. So I'm super excited about that. I want to go ahead and take a minute and share with you guys some of the beautiful hats that were popping into the FO thread for October. And then we're going to announce the winner of the October portion of the knit along. So take a look at some of the lovely finished objects for the October portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018. <laughs> as always, but let's go ahead and announce the winner for October. The winner is Joanna, who is Snowy Owl Crafts. She knit a garter stitch hat, and I could tell that she kind of um, improvised the pattern as she went. It's beautiful. There, If you head over to her um, Ravelry page for this particular pattern, she leaves some notes down at the bottom if you wanted to recreate the hat yourself. But it's a very beautiful, simple um, garter stitch hat with a nice little faux fur pom-pom on top, or it might be real fur, who's to say? But anyway, congratulations, Joanna. You are the winner for October. Please get in touch with me so I can get your prize out to you. If you're curious about what your prize is, I'll go ahead and pop a little bit of a clip from the last episode right up here, or you can head over to episode 34 and check it out over there. We are moving on to November now, which is a month of knitter's choice. You get to have a lot of fun with this. You can knit any hat your little heart desires. So have a lot of fun with that. It ends on December 1st, or really it kind of just ends whenever I remember around the beginning of the month, but you have essentially a month to knit the hat of your choice. The next make along that we have going on over here at the podcast is the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along 2018. This is where we are creating crochet or knit garlands that we can use for either holiday festive decorations or just anytime around the house, wherever you want to put it, decorations. The purpose for this was because I wanted to create a crochet granny square garland for my sister-in-law who is expecting a baby literally any day now. And I was just hoping that maybe other people would want to do that with me. And it turns out that a few of you did. So we created a little make long for creating crochet or knit garlands. We're doing this until the end of the year. So if you're interested in giving it a shot, I know this isn't really the typical uh, project that most people are working on right now, but if you're interested in trying something new or creating some holiday decor, then definitely jump on board. It ends the first of the year. So you have plenty of time. I'm really excited to share with you guys today. Finally, um, my work in progress for my granny square garland. Now you guys, what you're about to see here, I did in like literally no time. It's gone by so quick. Um, now previously I had mentioned a particular book I had purchased that I was going to be using for my crochet garland. Um, and I'll pop that right up here so you can see which one I'm talking about. Now, it's beautiful. What this book has in it is really beautiful if you wanted to do some kind of a granny square or a 
motif square, crocheted square uh, for a garland or a blanket or anything, any kind of um, whatever that you want to do with it. it it's really great. There, it's a huge resource for that kind of thing. But I'm telling you some of the patterns in there, like I thought they were going to be easy. And then I tried doing them and I found that I just, I just found that I had to keep referencing what the different stitches were. And I had like my phone and YouTube and the book and like various different things. It was just not what I was looking for, especially considering I know exactly what my sister-in-law wants. Um, she wanted just a really nice kind of vintage inspired, plain and simple, not plain and simple in appearance, but plain and simple in, you know, process, granny square garland. And, and I know that because that's exactly what we saw in this little shop where she um, found this. And so I figured, you know what, let's just go on YouTube and type in granny square and see what we find. And if there's somebody there who's kind enough to show us how to make one. In fact, I want to um, share with you guys the name of this particular person in her YouTube channel so you can go and check Senators. it out yourself. Political ads are just abundant on YouTube right now. It drives me crazy. So this is by Simple Simply Daisy on YouTube. I'm going to link to all of this down below in the show notes, but just for now, Simply Daisy on YouTube, and it is how to crochet a starburst granny square. Now, what I loved about this was that at the very beginning of this video, she's thanking her viewers because she now has 100 subscribers. I thought this is so cool. I'm going to subscribe to her channel. I didn't look at the date of when this was uploaded. Well, this was uploaded in 2015, and you guys, now she has 154 thousand subscribers just really funny because I'm like wow she's doing fantastic and then lo and behold she has all of these fantastic crochet tutorials so if you're getting into crochet definitely subscribe to her because um, she's got tons of tutorials there for you guys but anyway that's simply Daisy and how to crochet a starburst granny square and that's exactly kind of what I used to create my granny squares and I have three of them super excited so I mentioned previously, or I didn't mention, but I shared with you guys the yarn that I was going to be using um, for these. Now I just found some, you know, kind of fun, uh, funky colors. It's just an acrylic worsted weight yarn that I picked up at Joanne, and I figured I would use those because they would definitely have that vintage vibe to them, like the really saturated, um, not necessarily primary colors, but just those real funky saturated colors. So that's what I went with. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have so far. Again, this is just a simple sunburst, starburst uh, granny square that I did after watching that tutorial. Super easy tutorial, you definitely need to check it out. So I'll go ahead and show them to you one at a time and then I'll put them all together. So the first one I did is right here. And I love it. Like, you guys, like, hello, if this isn't Scream, like the 70s, like put all of these together and throw it over the back of a sofa. Um, I don't know what does, but I love the colors. I think they're really cool. And I'm imagining it in a garland with others with alternating colors and just different colors. Um, so it's, it's really pretty. I really love it. So here is the sunburst or starburst granny square. This is my first one that I created. And I'm really, really happy with it. I There were a few things that I didn't do correctly. So um, over here, you'll see that there's a little gap right here. And that's because I connected the two sets of triple crochets with a chain three. And I forgot to do that over here. Um, so there's no chain three on this side, but it doesn't really bother me. I'll just hang it on the garland like this. Um, yeah, so I love it. So here is the first one that I did. And then actually second one that I did. This one I did the chain three in all the corners just because you know I remembered. And it was super easy after I did the first to just work up the next ones. She um, writes the pattern in the description box of the video, the tutorial for this. So after you've watched it once and created once along with her tutorial, you can just reference back the description box because that's where the pattern is and it's super easy. And the stitches are not complicated. I mean, if you are a veteran crocheteist and you're watching this, you're probably thinking that, but if you've never crocheted before, these are so simple. It's like the granny stripe blanket, just super, super Super simple stitches. Um, they're not all that particular stitch, but they're that kind of simplicity, I guess you could say. So that's my second one. And then my third one, this one reminds me of like toy dinosaur colors. <laughs> they're not the most like romantical colors, but you know, it's going to go into a baby's room and be really cute and vintagey hanging on the wall. So all three of them together, and I don't know the order that I'm going to be hanging these and I'm not finished with them yet, um, but that's kind of what we have so far. So very festive. Um, I think and I think it's gonna look really pretty. I'm thinking I'm gonna do five. I think 
depending on how long that ends up being. Because I know she's not looking for something that's going to drape several times around the room. It's just kind of like one, you know, little drape and, and that's that. So I'm thinking five would be good. If not five, maybe seven. But odd numbers, kind of the way to go. That's what I hear. So that is what I have so far. Finally, I have something to show for the Wool Needles Hands Garland along. Um, and I'm really excited about just how easy it was and how relaxing it was to do it. I actually, um, so this is a worsted weight kind of a little bit on the heavier worsted side and I'm using a um oops an H a five millimeter crochet hook and it's actually this I don't know if you've ever seen these before but they're um lit crochet hooks it's called the crochet light and I just happen to have these I think my mother-in-law got these for me um and they're cool because they light up do you see that Woohoo! Yeah, as soon as my son saw this, it's like he thought it was a lightsaber or something. He was so into it. I haven't used the light. It's like if you're camping and you need to do some crocheting out in the woods, this could come in handy. You know, who else? This, What else this could be handy for? I don't know. I mean, getting your way around. I don't know. Haven't used the light, but I do really like the crochet hook. It's nice and comfortable. So that's what I'm using size-wise. It is an H. Five millimeter. This is a worsted weight acrylic yarn from Joanne. Um, nothing crazy fancy here, but I love it. The colors are a lot of fun. I'm planning on having this finished by tomorrow. I think I can whip up the rest of these um, tonight while we're watching some shows on Netflix and be done with it. And then I can get it shipped off. And maybe that'll be the little thing that uh, gets this baby coming into the world so we can all meet her. Um, who knows? So that is almost finished. I hope you guys jump on board with the garland along. I know it's kind of an unusual project to start in the midst of fall and winter knitting when we're doing sweaters and socks and mittens and all of that, but it's kind of a little break in the regular lineup. So if you're interested, head over to Ravelry and join over there. You guys, I am so happy to be sitting down, chatting with you guys, podcasting today. Let me just tell you. So I don't know what it was, but I could tell in the last episode of the podcast as I was filming, I could just tell something was off. Um, I kept having to like clear my throat and take a drink of water. It was just kind of not the easiest podcast to film. And I kept thinking to myself, like, I might be getting sick. I can't be getting sick. I don't have time to get sick, that whole thing. Um, my husband was kind of starting to feel sick and I had known that. And lo and behold, this you know cold came over everybody in our household. So we all got it at almost exactly the same time and it was a bitter and stubborn head cold that turns to like this really awful, not really like a chest cold, but you just get that leftover grossness that happens from a cold. So yeah, really gross. Um, but I'm finally breaking through to the other side of that and feeling so much better. Um, my voice is like kind of back to normal now. It's not been like lost or anything. It's just been scratchy and kind of just not, not up to par. Really hard to podcast when your voice is like that because you find that you have to stop all the time and take drinks of water. So here I am feeling so much better. The family is better. Everybody's better. So I'm really happy to be able to be here with you guys today chatting about the things that I've been working on. So welcome and thank you for being that for me. But uh, anyway, I am drinking a new tea. This was actually so kindly um, gifted to me by one of my lovely customers. And I'm not sure if she's a viewer of the podcast. She might be. So Julianne, if you are watching, thank you so much for this tea. It is by The Mighty Leaf and it is White Orchard. So like I said, Mighty Leaf. I've never had this tea before. Let's see if it'll focus on this and not focus on the sheep behind me. There we go. Um, the Mighty Leaf right here. And uh, yeah, it's White Orchard and it's really quite delicious. Yeah, I really like it. It's like got a jasmine kind of flavor to it. Um, mellow, a little bit of a bitterness, but not too much. It's nice. It's good. I really like it. And I am drinking it out of my um, cat mug, my party cats. I love this mug. This is one of the first mugs I featured on the podcast when I first started. Um, yeah, I just love it. You know, I don't drink coffee out of this mug very often because coffee gets cold so fast and because it's an open mug and kind of shallow it seems like it just doesn't keep my coffee warm but tea it's perfect for because tea unlike coffee doesn't get cold fast in fact it just stays really hot for a long time and this kind of you know eases that a little bit so anyway my cat mug to go along with my Andy Warhol cat t-shirt perfectly paired for this episode <laughs> 
Okay, so you may have noticed at the opening of this segment, I have changed the name from Knitting in the News to Bits of Knit. And that's because I feel like I wanna broaden this category just a little bit. I've had uh, some really great viewers submit stories to me that aren't really um, current events in the knitting world, but they're really awesome little bits of uh, knitting material or fiber related stories that are really fun to share and interesting things to know, especially considering this is a craft that we love so much. So I wanna change this to Bits of Knit to brought in the category. So it's no longer going to be just news about knitting currently that's a, you know considered a current event, though those will pop up from time to time. It's going to be about all kinds of interesting knitting stories that are fun to share. So the first one that I have to share with you guys today is about something pretty interesting that I've never really heard of before now, and it's called sea silk or bysis. The story was submitted by Allie Lynch, who is at Allie underscore Lynch on Instagram. So thank you, Allie, for submitting this. So in the famous Greek myth, Jason and the Argonauts are on the search for a precious fleece. What makes this fleece so special is that it is allegedly woven with golden wool from the fleece of a golden ram. Jason and the Argonauts are in search of this because Jason wants to use this in exchange for the throne of Thessaly, as the Greek myth goes. Around the same time, in biblical stories, King Solomon is known to wear a lightweight tunic that shimmers in gold in the sunlight. In the New Testament, angels are described as wearing linens of shining gold gold, and the Apostle Luke wears shining golden garments. Question is, was this all metaphorical or does it stem from some natural phenomenon? As far as we all know, there is no sheep who bears golden wool. And at the time that many of these stories were told, the invention of lame wasn't around yet. But what was around is a substance or rather a fiber called byssus. Byssus can be created from a few different species of mollusks, but it is the pen clam that is known for its most beautiful version of byssus. Noble pen shells are actually quite large in relation to clams. They can grow up to four feet wide and they produce this fine filament or solidified saliva that allows them to adhere to the floor of the ocean. This particular byssus was prized by many ancient civilizations including the Greeks and the Mesopotamians and not only for its glittery gold appearance but also because it was very dainty and warm at the same time. Stockings and gloves were the most popular accessories that were created with byssus and it is said that byssus is so light a pair of gloves woven with bices could be folded and fit into a walnut shell. The noble pen shell is currently endangered. It's found in the Mediterranean Sea, but due to overfishing and pollution, it's no longer thriving. Because of this, harvesting the beard of the pen shell is incredibly difficult. And because of that, there is only one woman who is said to be a master harvester of the beard of the noble pen shell. She's not only able to harvest it legally, but she's able to do it without harming the noble pen shell. Her name is Chiara Vigo, and she lives on the island of Sant'Antioco, Sardinia. She's a master at harvesting and weaving the byssus of the noble pen shell, and she's allowed access to the noble pen shells in the Mediterranean and accompanied by the Italian Coast Guard when she goes down to dive to harvest their beards. Because of the precious nature of this particular fiber, she has sworn to never sell any fabric ever made from the byssus of the noble pen shell. Rumor has it that she is not the only woman who's able to weave the byssus, but as far as anybody knows, she is the only master at the craft. She also seems to be the only person who can make it shine in the sunlight using a special solution and also is able to dye it using the traditional methods. Whatever the story is and the truth behind Bysis, it's absolutely incredible. And as a member of the fiber community, it's always super interesting to learn about the various little nooks and crannies of the fiber arts. And this is definitely a very special nook of the fiber arts. It is such a small, uh, tiny little nuanced aspect of this fiber community. And it's interesting to think that you may never actually feel or see this particular substance. It is that precious, but knowing it exists is a little added silver lining. All right, guys, here is my Mira by Amy Christophers. This is a beautiful colorwork hat that I just completed. It is a, a free pattern. It's a free download on Ravelry. It's by, designed for Barocco. Um, the yarn that the pattern calls for is a Barocco yarn. This is actually knit in Fiber for the People yarn with the exception of the Lion brand. Um, it's kind of like their luxury fiber line happening um, in the white space. That's their natural pure wool. I have a bunch of that in my stash and I really enjoy having it for color work. I feel like so often lots of really pretty color work patterns include a white or a natural um, yarn. And this is uh, kind of, it's not an Aran weight. 
um, it's a worsted weight, but it's a little bit on the heavier side, especially after you block it and it blooms a little bit, but it really fills in all of the space in the project nicely. So that's what's going on here. So we have fiber for the people yarn, which is my own hand dyed yarn. Um, those are the solid colors and then lion brand pure wool in the natural color in the white space. So I'm really excited about this hat. So go ahead and take a closer look. I will show you some photos that I took, um, some finished object photos in just a moment. How pretty is that? All right, so let's talk about the colorways. The purple that you're seeing here is the Mama's Lipstick colorway. We have Mama's Lipstick. The pink that you're seeing is called Sugar Pie. Then the, the natural is the Lion brand. The pretty toffee is English toffee. And, and yeah, and that's it. So those are the three colors that I'm using in this hat. You know, after or as I was working on this section right here, I kept telling myself, oh, it would look so pretty with a pop of another color happening in the middle of these diamond sections right here um, because they're just white and it would be really fun to kind of have you know, a pop of color going there. But you know, no big deal. I think it's beautiful just the way it is. And I actually kind of like the subtle um, blending of that light color with that pink color happening in there. Ugh, so pretty. And then look at the way that the hat um, decreases. So you decrease in with color work as well. So as you decrease your crown, you're still carrying over some of that color work. But just like, ugh, look how pretty that is. So pretty. I love it. Just a really cool hat. It fits nicely. I didn't have to actually, I didn't have to do anything to modify the color work part of the pattern, but I did make some modifications on the hat just in general. When I looked at other people's project pages for this, I noticed that the hat seemed to be coming off more on the small side um, than the side of what the pattern looked like on the model. I felt like the model's hat looked drapier and slouchier than most of the finished projects that people had been doing on Ravelry. And so I was concerned just because um, I didn't want that. I don't like it when you know, hats fit too tightly. I like them to have a little bit of a, of a drape to them, a little bit of a slouch. So I wanted to make sure that was the case. So I increased the number of stitches I cast on um, and then I increased for the body of the hat accordingly. Um, this is a, how many stitches is this repeat? A six stitch repeat. And so I just increased the stitch count by a, a count of six. And there's actually, I put this in my project notes, but there was somebody who had done the exact same thing um, on Ravelry and I just did what they did. And it worked out really well. It does have a really nice slouch. It seems still to be a little bit smaller than the one that the model is wearing, but it doesn't bother me because it fits my head nicely. Um, so I like that. Anything, what else did I do? And that was actually the only modification really to the hat. A couple things that I would do differently next time if I were to knit this pattern, and I totally see myself knitting this again um, for members of the family, just because it was it knit up so fast. Um, it's a really nice, easy, comfortable color work project. Um, but one thing that I would do differently, I think, in the future is I would add those pops of color, like I mentioned, and then I would change the brim to a two by two brim. I really, and I've mentioned this before, I really don't like a one by one. I just, I feel like there's something about a one by one knit brim that comes off kind of like wonky. It just doesn't look really nice and luxurious. It kind of just looks, I don't know, this looks nice. I feel like the yarn really works well in this because that worsted weight yarn um, is just, it's beautiful. It's my favorite worsted. I'm biased, but it's just true. But I just, I don't know. I don't like a one by one rib. And I, like I said, I've mentioned this before. I also feel like too, it creates this like ridge between the main part of the project and the ribbing. Like right here, there's just this really unattractive like ridge that happens, even if you knit this on a smaller needle. I don't know, not a huge fan. So if I were to do this again, I would probably do a knit to purl to um, rib for that. And that's, I mean, really, all I think I would do differently. I really enjoy it. I really like it. I'm not sure what I'm doing here to create this like wonky like ridge that happens or seam type thing that happens at the beginning and the ending of the round. I'm assuming that must be kind of normal because you're going to get a little bit of a jog in the colorway when you change rounds. It doesn't bother me at all because it just <laughs> denotes what's the back of the hat and I just wear that in the back so no big deal. Um, but yeah, I think that my, and I know this is the case for a lot of people, I think that my color work tends to be a little bit, um, when I knit color work, I think I tend to knit it tighter 
I don't notice any puckering or anything like that too much, um, but I do think that it just tends to knit up a little tighter. So maybe in the future I'd use a larger needle size. I think it's the opposite. I think the recommendation is actually to go down a needle size when you're doing color work. Um, I don't really know. But I don't even know if I would take the time to worry too much about that just because it does look really nice. I feel like it came out really nice. And then I just combined all of the yarns that I used to create this cute pom-pom. I attach my pom-poms pretty simply. I don't attach them with the idea of them being permanent because I always figure you could change your pom-pom. I just kind of attach it and then tie a little bow to hold it in place. So that way if I wanted to take it off, I could just simply untie the bow and pop it off. And while we're at it, you can see the floats and how like, okay, this is like those like dirty little secrets that you don't let anybody see. But when I weave in ends, there's really no rhyme or reason to the way that I weave in my ends. But what I do make sure I do is I have them going in like a zigzag. I know they say you shouldn't weave in ends where you just have it going in a line, you know, in and out of strands of your work. It should be in some kind of a zigzag pattern. It makes it harder for it to kind of pull free. And so I definitely abide by that rule, but otherwise like it's kind of all willy nilly, like just get a load of that, you guys. So if you feel bad about the way you weave in your ends, don't, because this is just madness, absolute madness. But anyway, here are my floats. And I think they look pretty grand. Not sloppy, not too long. I do catch them if they tend to be longer, but honestly, there were several times where I didn't just because it's a hat and it's not like little fingers are gonna be getting snagged on anything. It'll just be going on your head. Um, so I didn't, you know, catch my floats every single time, but. Ultimately, you guys, I'm really, really happy with this. If you need a color work hat, maybe for December for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along, this is a really great option. It's free, which you can't get much better than that. It's fast because it's worsted weight. And even if you wanted to do it for a smaller person, you could probably pop down to a sport or a DK weight size. And there you go, you're golden. So loving this hat. I just looked over here because the sun is shining through the window over there and it's like, this close to blinding me. Love this hat. Definitely check it out. It is the Mira by Amy Christophers. you guys let's talk about works in progress so I shared with you one of my works in progress in the beginning of the episode where I was talking about the garland along my little garland pieces so that is a work in progress but it's gonna be done pretty quickly but my main work in progress that I've been working on since finishing well since before I finished the mirror hat but since I finished that that's it's been pretty much my only knit work in progress. This is a design by Melissa Whirl for Brooklyn Tweed. It is a beautiful cardigan that has this really pretty kind of like asymmetrical, well, it's not even asymmetrical, it's a symmetrical um, kind of triangle design on the sides, so pretty. So I have it here to share with you guys. I, um, I feel like last, yeah, in the previous episode, all I had done was my provisional cast on and a few rows of one of the ribbed, bottoms of the sweater pieces it's so you start out by knitting the little ribbed edges of each piece of the cardigan and then you knit them all together that doesn't make sense when i'm explaining it to you like that so i'll just show you what i'm talking about but here is what i have so far of my truss cardigan so i'm going to hold it back so you can kind of see so here it is i love this so much but I'm not gonna lie and tell you this is like a super easy mindless project because for whatever reason, for me, it's not. And that has nothing to do with the design or the pattern or anything. It's probably just me, but I don't know. It might be the chart. Maybe it is the chart because the chart is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you kind of, I don't know. We'll get to that in just a second. So anyway, what I was saying in the beginning was that you um, cast on stitches for each of the sides of the cardigan. So you have your right and left front, which is what you're seeing here. And then you cast on your back stitches, which are here. And then you um, 
knit them together. So you you create each of those and then you knit them together and it creates these really nice little notches right here. And then you have a provisional cast on left. And that's because you're going to create a um, tubular edge to this, which is awesome. I love it so much. I love the way it looks. And prior to doing this, I hated actually, you know, doing a tubular cast on because I felt like it was just the worst, the way that you would twist the stitches um, and you have to use like a straight needle and then add it to your circular. It was just really complicated. But I found um, that using the method that the pattern tells you to use um, is just, it changed my tubular cast on world. So definitely if you are going to cast on to this, never fear the tubular cast on because the method that they explain in the pattern is just beautiful. It makes doing a tubular cast on like nothing and it would probably end up making it to where that's your you know cast on of choice when you're doing a garment like this or a hat with a brim that you want to have that nice kind of rounded edge so love that but they also recommend I just I find hay in this yarn all the time and I like that but they recommend that you leave your provisional cast on in the edge of the sweater so you can see this navy blue yarn here um they say that you should leave it in there because it keeps it maintains the shape of the edge without it getting too loosey-goosey as you work on it and especially as you block it so i'm just going to go ahead and leave it in there and then as i um you know after i block it and get it all finished then i will pull it out and have a really nice um not loosey-goosey at all tubular cast on edge so loving that so let's go ahead and look at kind of like the cable triangular pattern that I was telling you about. So, okay, that's the right side. So here it is here. This is um, the side of the cardigan. It kind of fits like here. And so you'll have this truss shape, like a truss of a bridge, kind of up the side, you know, of your cardigan like that. And I think that's such a beautiful design element. Um, it adds, you know, a little bit, I keep looking to see if it's in focus. It adds structure to, you know, what's otherwise a pretty boxy cardigan. And because it's not seamed up the sides, you lose just a little bit of that, you know, structure that you would get from a side seam. But I think this kind of adds that back a little bit. So it's really nice. Um, and it also, it has that ribbing that goes all the way up, you know, so you're, you have a kind of the sections are broken in from stockinette to this like ribbing by that truss cable motif that you can see so get a little closer so it's really pretty this yarn makes it kind of hard for me to show because it's I don't know it's just a little bit more difficult to show but anyway and I love it but here's kind of like my only beef with it now I'm not going to show you this whole chart because I know that that's not the best thing to do because I guess people are worried about pe people stealing you know patterns by screenshotting like the, the screen which okay I understand but anyway I'm going to show you some of the chart so that you can kind of get a gist of what I'm talking about so I'm just going to cut this in half and fold it over so you're not seeing the whole thing at once okay so here is part of the chart so I have highlighted the rows that I've completed but what you see here let's see um, you see the cable motif happening here and then over here is just a bunch of rib. So knit one, purl one, rib. So you have the cable motif and then all of this. And it is twice as long as what you're seeing here. Um, let's get it to, there we go. Because I have this paper folded in half. So this actually goes twice as long as you see. Now here's where that becomes tricky. You start knitting to your cable section and then you're greeted with this really long portion of, you know, one by one rib. And you're not certain about how many times you're going to do one by one before you get to your next cable. Now that's not, that's not something that's hard to find out. I get that, but it's, you, you have to stop and look and think, okay, well, there's no way I can keep track of how many I've done unless I go in here and like write some notes down. All I know is it's a, you know, X number of stitches in the chart and you, and, and then every, every row you're doing something different because you have this narrowing, you know, cable motif and whatever. So what I ended up having to do is I had to write in the rows, someplace in the row, I wrote down how many stitches in each section I was going to be working in that particular stitch pattern. So I know how many stitches I'm going to knit in stockinette up to the point where I cable 
and then I know how many stitches are in the cable and then I'm gonna I wrote down in there how many times I'm gonna do a knit one purl one before I get to the next cable on the other side and then that changes every single row so you have to pay attention it's not like you're just gonna remember or it's gonna become intuitive like you can, it changes all the time and yeah there's like some kind of like a mathematical algorithm that I'm sure could tell you, well, every time it's going to be this many more or this many less, but it's really not that easy. If you decide you want to knit this and you should, it's not like this is something that's driving me crazy. I'm obviously making progress. It's you just want to take the time to write down how many stitches in each section there are. Maybe I'm making this way more difficult on myself than I need to. Um, you can let me know that down in the comments if you'd like. But otherwise, that's just what I would recommend you do. So if you decide to do this, take the chart um, and, and write some notes on it. And also, too, um, I'm the worst when it comes to just remembering what kind of cable I'm supposed to do from the symbol in a chart. I don't like I know I could look at it and see like, what is the chart showing me? That's what the yarn's going to be doing and, and make that connection. But I'm really bad about that. So I like do some like cut and paste to my chart and I take that like legend that comes like this and I like cut it out of the page where the legend is and I pasted it here so that it's always at the top of my chart. It's like, you know, a cut and paste project in preschool over here with the colors and the highlighting and the numbers and it's a hot mess, but you know what? It's getting me somewhere. I feel like I'm making progress. So that is all that matters. I do love this and I'm really excited to have it finished. I just know it's gonna go with so many things in my wardrobe. It's really pretty. There is a pretty glaring mistake um, to, you know, trained eyes would definitely catch it. And it, I blame it on how, you know, not confusing, but frustrating or busy that chart tends to be is I just kind of missed something, but really it's my own fault. Um, what happened was, is I did one of the cables one stitch over from where it was actually supposed to be. So it pushed out here. Let's see if you can see this. So it pushed out one of the little yarn overs so you're supposed to have these yarn overs following this cable all the way up like this. But I don't know if you can tell that this yarn over right here is kind of pushed in this way more than the others. And that's because I did one of the cables um, one stitch over. It didn't mess up my stitch count. It just pushed it over. So and I didn't notice it until I was a few rows beyond. And I really I don't know, like my inner uh, Andrea from Fruity Knitting was telling me to go back and fix it and make it right. But then like me, myself, who really had all the time that I've been putting into like getting this, you know, chart down so I understood what I was doing. And I looked at it to see if it was even that like obvious and I decided just to leave it. It didn't mess up my stitch count. I kind of got back on track and it seems totally fine. I'll get a little closer and you can kind of see it there. Um, can you see? Yeah. So yeah, no big deal. Really no big deal at all. So I just kept it and I figured it's just a little secret design element that only I will know about. If any stranger in the real world decides to walk up to me and say, one of your eyelets is off kilter. I don't even know. What would you do in that situation? That would be crazy. I don't even know what I would say to that person. Like kindly pat them on their head and be off with you. I doubt that's even going to happen. But if it did, Maybe that would be a funny thing to talk about. Really happy with my progress. Um, like I said, this is pretty all much all I've been working on um, and the mirror, but now that the mirror is finished, this is kind of all I have going right now. So that's that. That's kind of a cool feeling to not like have anything that you have to work on, you know, that's lingering in project bags. I did um, a little while ago a pretty serious uh, frogging kind of festival for myself where I just grabbed a bunch of projects that I knew I wasn't going to finish and I frogged them. It felt really good. It was really um, therapeutic to do that. So I really don't have anything just lingering around staring me in the face that I need to finish. I have a few things that are there, um, but I don't feel this pressure to finish them right now just because they're not items that I really need or want at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a light feeling. And then also too, it means I can go and add something to my queue because I've taken some things out of my queue. So that's kind of fun. And I'm going to talk more about that on project forecasting in just a moment. But in the meantime, that is my progress on my truss cardigan. And I love the yarn. This is, um, I'm doing this in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is what the pattern calls for. So this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Long John's colorway. So 
really a pretty luscious uh, deep red colorway that I love and you guys I'm telling you it's speckled with hay I don't know if you see this like barnyard action that's happening in there in random places but that's one of the cool things about Brooklyn Tweed yarn is you get a lot of or any kind of woolen spun yarn really you get a lot of barnyard in your yarn but that is that, and I love it. So definitely if you're looking for a new cardigan to knit, something that is boxy and really comfy to wear, look for the Trust Cardigan by Melissa Whirl. Okay, so let's do some project forecasting. Since I finished my Mira and since my Trust Cardigan is underway, I have some room for some project forecasting and some additions to my queue. I wanna maintain my projects so that I always have one small project going and one larger project going to kind of break up the monotony of working on one project all the time, but not going too crazy into having too many cast-ons at once. So that's kind of what I'm going for right now. But since my Mira is finished, I have some room for a smaller project to add to my project lineup in addition to my trust cardigan. And then when my trust cardigan is finished, I will pop in a new larger project. So let's go ahead and chat about what I have in the plans for those two things. Okay, like I mentioned, my queue is only going to contain five items. Right now, I think I only have three, but two of those are sweaters and one of those is a pair of socks. The socks that I added to my queue are called the Silver Dream Socks. It's a color work sock by Drops Designs. I've been wanting to do a pair of socks for my dad for quite some time now. I've knit him one pair of socks and he loves them and I really wanna make sure that I get him a new, really nice, cozy pair of socks for Christmas and so I felt something um, a little bit on the longer side leg wise and maybe something with a color work motif just because I've enjoyed doing color work so much why not add that to his knit sock so I found this design like I said it's called the silver dream sock I felt like this had a really nice classic fair isle motif not too feminine not too sparse but really really nice and it's not all over the sock it's just along the leg of the sock so it's not gonna be too overbearing or busy for my dad he would like I think that kind of ski sock kind of look, but I don't think he would want it all over the entire sock at least not as far as I can tell. So the pattern only calls for two colors, but because of my last shop update and some of the solid colors that I've been adding to the shop, I've been really inspired by three color, kind of like I did in my winter's fern hat that you saw two episodes ago. So I pulled some yarn from the most recent shop update for these particular socks. So this is DK yarn. This is my 100% superwash blue face luster sock base, formerly known as Vigor, but I am trying to move away from base names to just focus on the general description of the yarn and you can find out more about each of these yarns on the shop but this is my blue face luster dk weight base these colors are currently in the shop right now but i pulled them off the shelf because i was just so inspired by their warmth um and also too by kind of even though i don't think it's a masculine color combination exclusively i think it's really good for a really nice masculine pair of socks for my dad um and so these are them so we have here green ochre english toffee and espresso rose so i decided that i wanted to take these colors and use it in the silver dream socks with an addition of another i'm thinking a navy blue pop perhaps um to add to that so I'm hoping that they pan out to work really well. I mean, they're beautiful next to one another. I really love the combination next to one another. I can tell that um, the espresso roast and the English toffee do kind of have a similar tone to them. Um, and so I, I'm hoping that that doesn't create too much of a problem. But the green is, wow, that just got, things got crazy with green. But that one I think really is a nice bright color combination. And maybe even if I showed it, like this yeah but anyway these colors inspired me and I really wanted to try and incorporate these somehow into a pair of socks for my dad and I'm thinking that that silver dreams um, sock pattern is going to be the one and I like um, the longer leg of that sock I think that he would prefer a longer leg he talks about liking socks that um, stay in place and don't get loosey goosey and you know kind of wonky and I think that that is a really good way to prevent that from happening is to have a nice long leg that holds on to the wider part of your calf and I think that that um, 
that's kind of a, a really nice element of that pattern. I also like the shape of that toe. It has that really nice Scandinavian style kind of triangular toe shape. And I don't even know if it's a Scandinavian thing, but I just notice it, you know, in Scandinavian style mittens that it has that kind of like triangular or diamond uh, shape to like the top of a mitten or the top of a sock or the toe of a sock. So kind of liked that. That is going to be my next small project. I'm hoping that knitting them two at a time feels good just because I'd really like to avoid second sock syndrome if I can. Um, we'll see how that works. I've never done anything two at a time um, in color work because I'm very new to color work. Um, but if I can make that work, that's what I'm going to shoot for. So that is my small project. Okay, the next project that I have in the lineup is the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit on Ravelry. This is a very popular sweater pattern right now and for very good reason. It's a beautiful, simple, crew neck top-down raglan pullover and in the photos of um, the model who is the designer wearing the sweater it just looks so comfortable but chic at the same time it's a fingering weight yarn paired with a mohair yarn and I think that's so beautiful that fuzzy you know nature of the yarn not too fuzzy but nice it has a nice halo plus it's super warm and here where I live it does get cold in the winter time but sometimes it's not cold enough to have a coat just a really nice warm sweater will do and this is a perfect sweater for that so I would really like to knit this for that reason. I love the piece. I think it would be a staple, um, you know, in my wardrobe. But there's another reason why I want to knit this. I am going to be offering no frills sweater kits in the shop in the next shop update. So I'm super excited about that. I have some really great colorways planned for the no frills sweater kits. So I figured if I'm gonna be offering them in the shop, I wanted to take advantage of that and create my own for myself and also as a sample um, for the shop. I haven't decided exactly what colorway I'm going to be knitting mine in. I'm leaning towards my peachy keen color, um, which is in the shop right now. It's that really beautiful peachy pink color, either that or even maybe this green ochre, except I just don't know I, I love this. It's like one of my favorite colors, but I don't know if I would wear this as like a top-down crew neck raglan as often. I don't know. I mean, like holding it next to my skin, maybe I really love the way this color. My eyes are hazel, but sometimes colors like this bring bring out the green in my eyes, and I really like that. And so maybe this could be it. I'm looking at myself in the screen of my camera and I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? No frills it is. That is going to be the next sweater on my needles. And bonus, we're going to have no frills kits in the Fiber for the People shop. So keep an eye out for that. But that is my plan. So like I said, not sure about the yarn I'm gonna be choosing. Of course, it is gonna be a fingering weight yarn paired with a mohair yarn, which I do offer in the shop as well. All of that's gonna be in the shop with the kits, of course. So keep an eye out for that. But color, not so sure. I think I am going to be knitting it on my 100% non-superwash base, only because I think garments are, you know, this particular kind of garment specifically, um, it would be better with something that's not gonna lose its shape. And a non-superwash yarn is definitely more resistant resilient and more elastic. So I'm going to shoot for something like that. Um, but I don't know, it could be really pretty in my two ply 80-20 base as well. So who knows? I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted as that comes down the pipe. I have to finish my trust cardigan first, but that is definitely in my queue right now for my project forecasting. <music> All right, guys, as you can see, it's starting to get dark outside. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with a trip to a new local yarn shop. This is Hook and Needle in Maryville, Tennessee, and the footage was submitted by Nola, who is at Memory Bears Handmade. She sent this to me over Instagram, and it was so cute because she said that she's gone several times and has been meaning to take video, but she always forgets. And so she was there on an occasion with her husband, and her husband was the one that reminded her to take some footage so she could send it to the podcast. So that means so much to me. So Nola, if you're watching, thank you so much for submitting this footage of Hook and Needle. I can't wait to share it. I think it's really sweet too because Nola says that this is the only yarn shop she's ever been to that offers a punch card where you get a discount once the card is full and I think that that's really really cool. If I could figure out a way to do virtual punch cards in my shop I probably would do it because I think it's a really cool way you know to give back to those customers who continue to come back time and time again and I have several of those and so a virtual punch card maybe I need to figure out how to do that. Without further ado here is Hook and Needle in Maryville, Tennessee. <music> Thank you. 
time for me to take off. I am, had such a nice time sitting here with you chatting about all of the things I've been up to. I can hear my little ones out there playing and laughing and that is the sound of such happy things for me. So I'm excited to get out there, have dinner with my family and hang out and take the rest of the night and relax. I have a busy rest of my weekend and week next week finishing up all those advent calendars. So it's Sunday today and so this is a nice day to kind of just relax before a pretty busy weekend. So thank you guys so much for being here with me to chat, to hang out, to provide me with this really awesome creative outlet so that I can share all of these things with you guys. Until I see you guys again on episode 36 of the podcast, happy knitting, happy whatever it is you're doing. Bye!